was a Capuchin Franciscan friar known especially for his great preaching throughout Europe, especially Italy. Italy. He was born in the 16th century, 1559. He, even at the age of six years old, that little children in Naples used to preach during Christmas time at the age of 12, really, in imitation of Jesus when he was in the temple talking to the doctors. But he, at the age of six, would preach to the people and really touch their hearts and bring them to repentance in many cases, even at that early age. But at the age of 16, he entered the Capuchin Franciscans, was a model uh, of observance and obedience in the Franciscan life. And then he studied for the priesthood and he excelled in philosophy and theology and especially learning the languages. He was uh, fluent in seven different languages, Italian, Fran French, Spanish, German, Latin, Greek, and also Hebrew. Because of his knowledge of the Hebrew language, he was, um, he was sent to preach to the Jews in, in Rome and converted many of the Jews. He, in, he impressed many of the rabbis because of his knowledge of the Hebrew language and brought many to, to baptism. And he preached throughout throughout Italy, went from town to town preaching and was very successful in his his preaching. And uh, he uh, was uh, sent to Germany to found many uh, Capuchin convents there to counteract the influence of Martin Luther and uh, the Protestant revolution there. And when, while he was there, the emperor uh, learned about his fame and preaching and asked him to preach a crusade against the Turks who were threatening to invade Europe, especially Germany, where he was emperor. And so he went to the German princes and urged them to join the crusade and preach the crusade to the people. And he joined the army of, not fighting, but became the chaplain of the army of the powerful uh, Archduke of Archduke Matthias, and they went to invaded and, and went to Hungary to attack the Turks there. And when they came into the battle front, they uh, they saw the huge army of Turks, and they were all discouraged and despaired in victory. But uh, Lawrence went through the Christian army, uh, urging them to to fight, and that they would that they would be victorious. And he uh, roused them to courage, and they fought and completely routed the the Turks. And so after that battle, he wanted to go back and just be a, a humble friar. But when he went back to Italy, they, he was made uh, the uh, uh, vicar general of the of the order, and to, had to take on that great burden. And uh, from there, he was a peacemaker with the emperor and Archduke Matthias, who were in uh, disputing over over uh, matters of their properties, and also had to go to Spain to um, plead the cause of the uh, people of Naples who were being oppressed by the viceroy there. So he went to Spain and then Portugal, where the king was, King Philip. And during that journey, he died. So we have the example of a great uh, preacher who um, went through Christendom preaching. And uh, we have in the gospel here, uh, our, our Lord is urging the, his disciples to go and preach. And preaching is something necessary in all times. It is what really urges us to practice the gospel, to remind us of what, of what we're called to do, to stir us to action, to repentance, to, to love of God, to practices of virtue, and to uh, you know, stir us also with fear of punishment and also the rewards of eternal life. This is what St. Francis had told the Franciscans to preach virtue and vice, punishment and glory. 
we need to hear preaching, we need to preach. Preaching is not an easy thing and it's not always something that uh, everyone wants to listen to, but it's something we need to do both, to preach and to listen, to be stirred, to practice the faith, to practice the gospel, and to do it every day of our life to the, to the end. We always need to be to be preached to, to um, and to and to preach, not just in words, but especially in example. So we have this example of great preaching in Lawrence of Brindisi, and we need uh, more great preachers in in our day, and but especially those who are docile to the Word of God and who want to listen to the gospel and to hear it, the pure, unadulterated truth of the gospel, so that we are continually brought to repentance and conversion and to a more pure way of life, more fervent way of life. So let's ask uh, our Lord to give us those, that heart, heart of docility and openness to preaching. <laughs> 